morning, church. Welcome to worship. I'd invite you to rise as you are able and turn your attention towards the font where our journey with Christ begins and where we begin our worship service as well. We begin as we always do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say that we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in the world and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Be with you. And also you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. The Old Testament lesson is from 1 Kings chapter 19. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there was bread. There at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. 
He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. The New Testament lesson, Testament lesson is from Ephesians chapter 4. So then, put away falsehood. Let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal on the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not com complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, friends, grace and peace to you and to me from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, church, it happened. I didn't think it would happen this quickly. And I've got to be honest with you that I wasn't prepared for it at all. But we've hit the vocal stage in the Nelson Wagner household. <laughs> I say this because my daughter, Quinn, has figured out one of those critical areas of life wants. Our 
house is now populated by a cyclical stream of the short list of words that express what Quinn wants right now. There's baby, which means that Quinn wants either Emma or I to turn on our phone so that she can watch videos of herself. There's puppy, which means she either wants her stuffed puppy or one of our two dogs to pay attention to her. There's Mimi and Pop, Anna and B, Tom and Jay, which means Quinn wants to FaceTime with particular members of our family. There's Mandy, which is the name of our babysitter who Quinn just adores. And then there's, of course, Mama and Dada, which is usually said to one parent while the other parent is occupied doing something else. Now, Quinn's list isn't very long at least at this point. But she makes up for that brevity with an incredible passion for her wants. Passions that might lead her to, dare I say, complain in a physical and vocal fashion when she doesn't get what she wants when she wants it. And honestly, it's understandable and heartbreaking at the same time because she can't process these big feelings she has. So it all comes out in one loud, big mess. And complaining. Whether you're young or you're old, we've all done it. And we'll all continue to do it when we don't get things exactly how we want or how we plan them. Complaining, it's a common but it's not the only thing that's common when it comes to our readings for this week. My well, friends, this Sunday we continue our journey through the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, better known as the Bread of Life Discourse. And here in this chapter, Jesus is trying to frame for the great crowds that are following him the importance of the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding he's just done on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And as Pastor Patrick spoke about last week, this explanation doesn't go as planned. And upon finding Jesus on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, the people surround him yet again. They surround him and they begin to demand from him another sign, another miracle that will prove to them that Jesus is the Messiah, the one who's been promised to them by God. And when Jesus doesn't snap into action, well... They complain. Our ancestor Moses gave the people manna daily to eat in the desert, and he was the best of us. What are you going to do for us? What sign are you going to perform so that we can believe in you too? And to their questioning, Jesus reminds the crowd that it wasn't Moses who provided the manna, but rather God, the same God who sent him down from heaven to give life to the world. And just for a moment, the wisdom of Jesus is able to silence this complaining crowd. But once that moment passes, then they remember who's talking to them. And the complaining starts all over again. Except not at what Jesus is doing this time, but really who Jesus is. The wisdom that Jesus dispenses is overtaken by the fact that these people know Jesus. They've known him for years. How can he be the bread of life come down from heaven? It's not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose mother and father we know. How can he now say that I have come down from heaven? As they listen to Jesus continue his speech, their personal knowledge of him causes everything he says to them to really fall on deaf ears. You know, friends, Familiarity is the problem in this gospel lesson. Crowds here listening to Jesus know him. They know his family. They know his brothers and sisters. They've watched him play and grow and eventually move away. They know him as closely as any other child that grew up in their village. And it's for this reason. Because they know him. Because he's common just like they are that they start to complain. He can't possibly be special. He can't possibly be the one sent by God to redeem the world. We've seen who he is. He can't possibly be the answer to their collective prayers, the one to turn them around in their relationship with God. Because they know intimately their own flaws and shortcomings. 
their own lack of faith in personal failures. You can recall all of their broken promises, their pridefulness and their prejudices, all those things that they carry with them that weigh them down, cause them worry. In their minds, Jesus is just like them. They assume that he has a similar set of problems, and if so, how can he possibly save them? How can someone like them save anyone, let alone save themselves? For them, if this Jesus who we know, if this is the best that God can offer up, then they believe that they're really and truly doomed. They're complaining and they're anger, it's driven by fear. The fear that maybe they really aren't worth saving. Friends, are we really any different than our biblical counterparts here? We're in trouble or scared or hurt. Don't we expect a God who shows strength and works miracles? Don't we want to call on a God who answers quickly and clearly? Don't we put our trust in a God who's there visibly and physically when we are in need? Aren't we frightened that God can't handle the problems of our life sometimes? Do we not expect to encounter a God who's anything but like we are? And yet in spite of our wants and our wishes of the divine, God reveals himself as one who shares the same flesh as we do, who intimately knows our struggles and our sufferings and leads us into salvation. Friends, Jesus said, do not complain among yourselves. I hate to say it, but that edict wasn't just directed at followers 2,000 years ago. It rings true for us as contemporary followers as well. Even though much time has passed since those words were spoken on the shores of Galilee, we still share the same questioning and surprise at the God who invites us into the kingdom. We still look with surprise and shock at the fragile, frail, and human foundation of our church. It manifests in Christ Jesus. Sin still causes us to look down on the means by which God reaches out. Bread, wine, water. Ordinary, common, even mundane things. Hardly worthy of our attention, let alone God's use. And yet, friends, God is bold enough, audacious enough to use such ordinary things. To use common elements to achieve his will and bring salvation to the world. Friends, familiarity, it's not the problem from God's point of view. It's the solution. It's the great unifier and equalizer. Dear friends, we're called into a common mission. A mission to build up the kingdom that Jesus brings. A kingdom where Jesus doesn't reign by might, but with weakness. Where God doesn't come in power, but comes in vulnerability. We don't expect to find God through our own righteousness and justice, but our sinful and broken selves are found by God, by God's forgiveness and mercy. We're called into this mission together. It's the body of Christ because we're common, ordinary people. Common, ordinary people called to proclaim extraordinary grace and love. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Since God comes in common things, bread of life, cup of blessing, water of salvation. We may complain that God doesn't work exactly how we want or through the means that we expect. God works so that all people would experience his grace, his mercy, his love. So that all people might have eternal life. So where God calls common people by common means for the common good of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, let's stand and sing together. If you're using our hymnals, it's number 542.
Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future, Lord, in your mercy. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water, Lord, in your mercy. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure that fair administration of justice. For corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. Lord, in your mercy. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future. For all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick. We especially pray for Ron Henry, Russ Hokinson, Danny Mason, Judy Parsons, John and Barb Williams, Dave Frampton, Ruth Bowles, Lois Hardy, Nelson and Diane Murray, John Newcomer Sr., Carol Ruckel, Kevin Meinholt, Hildy Crothers, Lamont and Sharon Smith, Stephen Benscoder and family, Richard Pierce, Ron Norble, Inga Keith, Kelly Kraft, Lisa Kalinowski, Monica Darty, Jeffrey Stark. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration. For those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized. Lord, in your mercy. At this time, I invite everyone in the congregation to offer your own prayers, either aloud or in your heart. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. Lord, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you invite you to share God's peace and signs that you feel comfortable with, and for those who are streaming with us, receive our peace as well. Well, friends, good morning. Welcome to St. Philip's Lutheran Church, where our mission is to make disciples praise God and serve the community. Uh, I've got a couple announcements uh, this morning, the first of which is we have a lot of spots for volunteers. Uh, The first of which is as we're starting to move back towards normal worship, uh, we are going to be needing people to help fill out some of our ministry teams. And to do that would be to sign up as a greeter, an usher, an assisting minister, or a reader. Uh, It is not a very large uh, time commitment on your part. It is basically once every five weeks you are called to serve at worship, either at 8 or 1030. Um, And you can be placed on a team with other people, so it's a great way to meet new people uh, and get out of your comfort zone a little bit in a very not-so-scary way. Uh, So if you're interested in helping us fill one of these worship roles, uh, you can see Louise James or you can see Pastor Patrick or myself. Another opportunity to volunteer is with our uh, children's educational programming, our kids club and our growing in the gospel. We need some volunteers to help us out with that programming as well. Uh, That's also not a large time commitment on your part. Uh, That's about once a month uh, you'd be called into service to help us out with uh, some Sunday school programming and our growing in the gospel programming, which uh, is our age-appropriate teaching for the gospel lesson. Uh, So it's about 10 to 15 minutes of your time uh, during the sermon. Um, So if you're interested in serving uh, on that as well, you can see Sandy Budd, you can see myself, or you can see Pastor Patrick. 
Uh, the next thing that we've got up is coming on September 17th. Uh, we have a concert here at St. Philip's. We have the evening with Carol Brown. Uh, Carol is a guitarist who hails from South Carolina, who is venturing up our way to help out with the Christian Music Festival, but wants to hold a concert at St. Philip's on the 17th. Uh, the cost of that concert is $20 per person, and we're looking for about 40 people to sign up. Uh, so you can see in the back, there's a, um, in the middle table in the narthex, there's some information about that concert as well. Uh, you can also see Mark Davis, who's in the back, uh, looking dapper as ever, uh, if you have any questions. But right now, we just need your reservations. We don't need uh, the, the ticket sale just yet. So uh, if you're interested, it's a wonderful night out of good music and good company at church. Uh, the last thing that I've got this morning is we've moved into our August Summer of Service programming, and that is our familiar 25,000 Meals program. And there are two things that you can help us with as this program comes closer. We are actually making the meals on August 28th in the social hall. But as we creep closer to that date, we need a little bit of help. Uh, the two things that you can help us do are fundraise. Uh, if you've been in the narthex, you've seen the poster board. We're trying to fundraise the entire cost of this project, which is roughly $7,500. And that equates to about 30 cents per meal. Uh, so we're, if you are interested in helping us fund this project, um, please use the envelopes attached to the poster board. Uh, that helps our, our counters know where this money goes and is uh, just Good for keeping track of things. Uh, ultimately, the uh, meals that are made are going to be split between the Food Bank of Delaware and St. Stephen's Lutheran Church, which are the two big organizations doing food insecurity work in Wilmington. The second thing you can do is sign up. Uh, we're looking for about 100 volunteers, maybe a little bit more, uh, to help us make these meals. So there's a Sign Up Genius link that's rotating through our weekly communications. Uh, please sign up. This is a great way to get together with friends, get together with family, and really help out a needed cause in our area. Um, but at this time, we would normally be giving our gifts of offering. You guys do an amazing job of putting them in a basket, of mailing it in, of doing automatic withdrawal. Uh, so thank you for your generosity uh, as you continue to support us. Uh, but we're going to continue with our communion liturgy, so I'd invite you to rise as you are able. And let us pray together. Generous God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you, and with the church through the ages, we give thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, breath of life and fire of love. With a mighty wind, you brought creation into being. By a pillar of fire, you led your people into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your Son, who poured out your Spirit on his disciples of every race and nation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. 
do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son. Come, Holy Spirit. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. In confident hope of God's love and saving grace, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A couple quick notes about communion. We'll be celebrating communion around the uh, chancel area, uh, so please follow the instructions of your ushers. Uh, just a, another note about um, the cups we're going to be using uh, for those who want to receive the bread and wine, the empty cups. Uh, the inner ring, it is grape juice, although it does not look like grape juice. They didn't use the clear grape juice this time, so it's the purple colored grape juice. It is, in fact, grape juice. So as you depart your row, uh, please grab whatever you would like, the grape juice or the empty cup. Uh, for those who are on this side, you'll be starting in the back and wrapping around the front. For this side, you'll be starting in the front and wrapping around the back. Uh, for those who would like to use our pre-packaged kits, uh, they are right here. Um, so please just grab one as you take your place around the chancel area. Uh, as you depart the chancel area, there are places to deposit your cups on each side and come back uh, to your assigned seating. We'll be starting with the middle aisles first and then using the uh, outer aisles second. Uh, but remember, this is the Lord's Supper. The Lord extends an invitation to the feast to all people. So I hope that you come.
Friends, I'd invite you to rise as you are able. And let us pray. Holy and compassionate God, in bread and wine you give us gifts that form us to be humble and courageous. May your words come to life in our serving and in our witness, that we might speak a living voice of healing and justice to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord stay shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.